Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, haven't made a video for a little bit, so decided it was time to make one. Uh, today's date, it's February 3rd of 2019. And this is just going to be a little bit of an update. I'm going to try to avoid anything political. Um, I have been watching a bunch of YouTube videos. Well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, on Amazon Prime, I watched not one less. And I don't see here that I can show you a preview. I don't know whether you like this movie or, uh, movie or not, but I did. Uh, I'm not going to give you any details because it'll kind of spoil the uh, movie, but it is a Chinese movie. Um, it has English subtitles. On Amazon Prime, I'm not, I, it's messed me up a couple times. Eventually I'll figure, you know, learn how to, I'll, I'll remember how to do it correctly. But you can't start the Amazon Prime, I don't believe. You can't start the, 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 the movie and have the captioning working. Like I started watching the movie and the captioning worked. And then I, I walked, watched about two-thirds of the movie and then I was tired. So the next day I came back to watch it and then the captioning wasn't working. And you can't click and go to the movie and have Amazon Prime working. Uh, you have to exit out of the movie. And then you have to go, it's in the Amazon settings, not in like the movie settings. You can't go to the captioning and turn on the English, you know. You have to stop the movie, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, it has captioning. It really, I don't want to spoil it, it, but it gives you a look at what it's like. I mean, we've all watched the uh, videos and things, you know, YouTube videos of uh, people in China reporting on China, you know, from the big cities. And there's even the video made by the two uh, guys where they ride motorcycles through China and they have a, uh, I think it's like an hour, an hour and a half, Maybe it's two parts. Can't remember, but y you know you see that. But this gives you an idea. This movie of what it's like for those people who are Chinese, who are not in these major cities, and in the cities that China has set up for industry and. Uh, this gives you an idea of what it is like in large parts of China, you know, in the rural area, outside of these major cities. And anyway, this, uh, I'll read here. In a remote Chinese mountain village, a teacher named Gail, Gio, I don't know, must leave school to tend to his ailing mother. Desperate to find a substitute teacher in the remote village school, the mayor of the town can only locate a 13-year-old girl to fill in. As she embarks, well, I'll just stop it there. So it really, I mean, there again, I don't want to spoil the movie, but I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil the movie. But I do recommend it to you. It's uh, Amazon Prime. Not one less. Um, if you watch it, let me know in the, uh, if you have watched it or if you do watch it, let me know in the uh, remarks below what you thought about the, uh, thought about the movie. Yes, it is very slow moving and, uh, but that's part of the movie in certain parts, in a large part. Anyway, let me know. Um, I'm going to close this down so I don't get tempted to talk about politics because things upset me. I don't want to talk about politics, and I know you don't want to hear about it, but then 
when I hear people saying something or whatever, it just makes me want to, just makes me go nuts that people have the position that they have or will uh, have one position for eight years and then when the election changes things and you have a different president, then they uh, they say, oh, no, well, you know, uh, uh, the Congress needs to, uh, you know, to work with the president and stuff like that. Just stuff just drives me. It's that the kind of stuff that drives me crazy. It shouldn't be political. It, it ought to be like common sense. It ought to be whatever your party you ought to say. You ought to be thinking, yeah, that doesn't make sense, you know. But... I have been watching a, let's see, maybe I need to go here. Yeah, no, I think I'll go here. No, I need to go here. I have been watching a ton, I don't know how many, I have watched a ton of tropical fish and aquarium YouTube videos, and some of them run like, are like my videos that run an hour or two hours, and I've watched them. Uh, because it, for me, it's fascinating. Uh I started out life as a welder, boiler maker, um, built railroad cars, built trucks, whatever. And then at age 26, I got married. And I think I've told a little bit, but um, the I had a phone number, which my mother gave to me. Uh, for Darlene to call and I said no way am I calling some phone number that my mother gave me I was 26 years old and uh, anyway I ended up or weeks later or whatever I ended up calling and when I called to ask her for a date and I had never met her my mother and father were uh, drinkers alcoholics and her father, Darlene's father, owned a tavern. And my parents hung out there. And so my mother was telling uh, Darlene's mother how wonderful I was. Of course, my mother was correct. And of course, uh, Darlene's mother was telling my mother how wonderful her daughter was and uh, so I got the phone number so I called and when I called Darlene to ask her for a date uh, she said that she couldn't because she knew I was 26 and she was 18 and she figured that I was probably she probably figured that I was a drinker and uh, all this type of stuff. So she tried to get out of it, and she was setting up a an aquarium. Her uh, parents financed her to start a tropical fish shop. And uh, so she said, well, I, I can't, you know. Uh, I'm, I have to fill these tanks with water and set up this aquarium. And I said, well, I could just maybe come over there and meet you, you know, for just a few minutes and everything. And she um, okay, so I went over, and then I filled up the tanks with water, and then I took her out on a date. And so we ended up getting married. And uh, so for, I think, maybe about a year or so, I continued working as a welder, making really good money, and then uh, Darlene and her, her mother had been running the, you know, I'd been helping out, and Darlene had been, had been working, basically working there too, but her mother wanted no more part of it, and uh, Darlene couldn't do it by herself, so Darlene wanted me to quit, and uh, I went ahead and quit my job, and for four years, we had the tropical fish shop, and then I learned about tropical fish. I got into it heavily, and plants, I loved plants, still love plants. Uh, of course, I haven't had any aquariums or anything since, anyway, we had the shop for four years. 
I got into plants big time. Um, medications, we've made up our own medications that we, we didn't make them up. I mean, we bought them and, you know, put them in prescription vials with, you know, Siggy's Aquarium, uh, tropical fish medication and whatever. That was a big success. That was a big success. Uh, and I researched, you know, researched that and our medications worked. Um, so we had the fish shop for four years. Um, and then when it really, we just had to decide after, you know, we uh, had to decide, you know, okay, is this going to, are we going to be, because the tropical fish bit, I was surprised from watching um, well, this gentleman here. Uh, I've watched a bunch of his videos and he has, he has them great, he has it set up really well. He has these uh, playlists and so he has them in the list and you can follow through. Uh, he has a whole bunch of excellent ones. I was surprised, uh, one, that uh, he talks about and other ones that I've watched is that the tropical fish business is stealth. Or see, our tropical fish shop was 19, let's see, 72, 70, uh, the late 1960s into 1971. I might be off a little bit uh, in that period. So let's say right around the 1970s before it's late 1960s. And these people mentioned that it's still, that you don't do much business during the summertime at all. So with our tropical fish shop back then, and I guess ones nowadays, uh, during the wintertime, you, you know, business is great. And when summer comes, nobody wants to buy a fish. And of course, we tried after the first year, we wondered when the first summer came around, we wondered what in the hell's going on? What did we do wrong? What's why, you know? And then we found out that that was the problem. So then we introduced before the next uh, pond plants, water hyacinths, water lilies, stuff like that. That didn't help. Uh, then I think the next year we introduced pet supplies, you know, dog collars, cat collars, that type of stuff. And then I think for the last year and we added uh, some parakeets and uh, exotic, you know, uh, parrots, beautiful parrots, really, you know, on a small scale. Nothing really, you know. Uh, so we sold the aquarium. And I haven't had any. Now, when I, for that four years, I was working all the time. Uh, Darlene ordered the fish, and she priced the fish and the supplies. She ordered the tanks and that type of stuff but uh, and she priced it but I did all the selling of the fish uh, picking going to the airport to pick up the fish twice two or three times a month or whatever but um, so I've been watching these videos and the other thing I noticed was um, underground filters are not as popular, not nearly, they're not as they, whack back, as they were back then. I was a big fan of underground filters, although we had foam uh, filters too, and we had, the, of course, external tanks. And I haven't seen the, I guess that's not in style now, that I think for, what, diatom, and a very expensive filter, and it went through some type of material. But... All I've been watching, by the way, is, uh, and we didn't do uh, saltwater uh, stuff. We just did. Uh, but anyway, I've been watching these videos, and I'm getting, I know it's a mistake. I've been watching a lot of videos, and I have been thinking about getting one or, well, first I was thinking about getting one 20 gallon tank a 20 gallon high tank and I even moved 
the, you'll see the computer is not here. It's down, which is, if I put a 20-gallon tank here, the worst place in the world would be to have the aquarium which or have the uh, computer underneath it in case of a breakage or leakage or overflow or something. Uh, then I was thinking, well, you know, I do need, I would need a quarantine tank. So that'd be a second tank. And so I, I haven't made up my mind, but I've been watching all these videos and they've got some really much better fish now. Placostomus. I, oh, I love aquarium plants. That was my, one of my big things. And I love Placostomus fish. Uh, and they've got now, they've able to breed some. They have uh, albino ones and all types of uh, Placostomus. I would still, I think, go for the, you know, the old time kind. But uh, anyway, I've been watching and it's gotten my interest up. But one, I'm living on Social Security and a small pension check for the 18 years at the hospital or whatever. And I'm, I'm on a limited income. And, you know, I've already got computers. I'm definitely interested in computers and everything high tech like that. I'm also have always been interested in photography and amateur radio. And I cannot afford another. I can't afford to be interested in tropical fish and aquariums. Uh, too much expense, even though I would do it. You know, I wouldn't. We had a 100-gallon tank. Well, we, of course, at the shop we had, I don't know, 50 10-gallon tanks, three 29-gallon tanks. I think I may be wrong on this. Um, three or six 20-gallon high tanks. A 20-gallon long, I think it was, or whatever. But at home, we had a 100-gallon tank. Maybe a couple other little tanks. Uh, no, I, I would not. I'm just, I would like to have a small tank uh, with plants, a couple tanks with plants, heavily planted with uh, some Coriodorus catfish. I have Procostomus or two. And, uh, you know, that. Uh, probably no angelfish. Of course, I was interested in discus back then. Uh, but I don't know. I just, but I've been watching a whole bunch. I recommend, I'll put a link to below. And if you are interested in tropical fish at all now, or uh, especially this uh, gentleman has, uh, I think his name's Corey, I believe. I should know it because at the beginning of every video, he, uh, but go to the playlist here. Education, I'll click on it here. So he has, oh wait a minute, I think that's the wrong. Popular video playlist. Okay, I think that's, okay. Skip the educational, I think. Well, unless you're, do the popular video playlist series. Yeah, this is it. So he has Planted Aquarium Basics, seven videos. Top 10 Aquarium Fish, 20 videos. Uh, Breeding Fish for Profit, six videos. Um, Daily Dose Video Log Episode, 67 videos. Uh, fish Tank Fish Care Guides, 43 videos, and then aquarium products, uh, 24 videos. So I uh, do recommend that. So anyway, I've been thinking about that. Uh, I think I think since the last video, uh, Hillary and I went to, my daughter went to the casino and gambled a little bit. And today's Sunday. I believe tomorrow she's going to go and 
her son, Russell, and Jimmy, her brother, our son, is going to go. I may go tomorrow, but I don't really have the money to gamble with much. And anything I went and lost would, would really hurt. So I don't plan on going tomorrow. Well, I don't know. It depends. I might. Um, so, looking around here. Oh, what I'm going to do is the, I want to say Yoda. No, the, the blue, the Yeti. The big microphone that you see a lot of YouTubers using. This has worked out great for me, the headset. And this has worked out great. I've tried all these others, but I think I'm going to bring back for some reason. I don't know why I have to. It's in a closet with a bunch of computer stuff in front of it. So I have to move all that stuff. I should have, and I put it back there because I thought I'm not going to use the, the, uh, microphone anymore and I put it way back in the corner and I got everything stacked in front of it but I'm going to go and unstack the stuff and pull it out, hook it up and try it again but here on the desktop like I said the PC computer is now down there underneath and I have the two monitors the 4K monitor which I'm not using in 4K mode and then, uh, you know, the other monitor, so I have, so it's a 1080p, 1080p side by side. Because when this is in 4K and then I drag stuff over to the other monitor or stuff from the other monitor over here or whatever, sometimes it just gets small or gets big and it doesn't work out well. Um... This uh, Jesus monitor, I have another identical one to that, so I could put it over here. But the um, maybe what I, maybe what I need what I <laughs> maybe what I need is a um, maybe what I need is another identical 4K monitor to this LG one. Where did Put it here and have two 4K side by side. That might work when I'm dragging stuff back and forth. I don't know. Uh, I saw this pad over here and I thought, oh my God, what am I revealing? It's just some notes about aquarium tanks or something. Um, I changed the speakers a little bit. I was using the... Uh, Anyway, I change back to the speakers. I have this remote control here. But I can also use the scroll wheel here. And uh, I really don't turn around and watch very much stuff on this Roku TV. And I keep moving it. And I'm sometimes I just disconnect it, put it on the floor. I'm thinking about moving it so I can bring some other stuff over here. Over there, the shelf, I think you can see. Over there has USB devices on it and uh, chargers, battery chargers, and that kind of stuff. And I. Just think they might be better off over here. I could actually do more with them here. Uh, changing subjects. Which camera? Let's see, there we are. That's my high school alumni association newsletter that they send out occasionally. And in this issue, they uh, were talk. I, uh, I went to a Deagle Sound Military Academy, and uh, it was a 55C ROTC program, junior ROTC program. 55C is 
ROTC on steroids. And uh, so we, because we were military uh, all the time. We were, you know, like a normal high school ROTC, two or three days a week for an hour or two, you're uh, taking an ROTC class. We were in uniform, you know, the entire, w in the morning, uh, you know, the uh, battalion fell in front, fell in, uh, in front of the school, the, you know, the flag was raised, the national anthem was, you know, uh, played, and sound of the colors and all that type of stuff, and then we started our classes. We had a everyday we had a military class, and then on Friday, half a day was for military, and we had a, and that was our day we came in and dress uniform, because it was a full, you know, full dress parade, but um, from my second year of, uh, I started in 1955, graduated in 59, in 1960, we had major Ferris G. Spore, and he was the PMS and T, Professor of Military Science and Tactics. And uh, uh, it gives it, you know, he was born in 1910, and uh, is when he was married, and then he enlisted in 1931 in the Missouri National Guard. Odile Sound Military Academy was in Kansas City, Missouri. So he enlisted in uh, 1931 in the Missouri National Guard, and he was in the Officer's Tank Corps, or it said Officer, oh, no, not Corps, Course. So uh, he was promoted to Second Lieutenant. Then he was Battalion Intelligence Officer, S2. Then he was inducted in the U.S. Army in 1941, and he trained at Fort Lewis, Washington. And uh, in August of 1941, and remember, World War II started for the United States in December of 1941. So uh, he was unlucky. <laughs> in August 1941, he went to the Philippine Islands. And then uh, December 8th uh, of 1941 to January 6th, he was in the Battle of Luzon. Uh, he lived through the Japanese attack on Clark Island. He was in the Battle of Bataan from January 7th, 1942 to April 9th, 1942. And on April 14th, he, was, he became a prisoner of war. And then it goes on, and he was in the Bataan Death March. And uh, that was in April 9th, 1942, approximately 75,000. Prisoners of war began the march and uh, were assembled from multiple confinement camps. They were forced to march uh, 65 miles in six days with only one meal of rice during the entire journey. By the end of March, over 10,000 had died, and they would not see freedom until 1945. Uh, anyway, he died July 8th. Anyway, uh, Okay, go back. Um, uh, 1945, he was promoted to captain. And uh, then he was, oh, no, in 1945, he was promoted from captain to major. He was discharged from the United States Army in 1947. And then he served um, as military commandant. PMS and T, Professor of Military Science and Tactics at Delos Military Academy from 1956 to 1960. He died July 8th of 1982, and he's buried at Leavenworth National Cemetery. Plot, I think that's O. You know, you can't tell sometimes whether something is a, a zero or an O, a letter O. And his grave is number 741. There you can see his his picture. I remember him, of course. Uh, what's kind of strange is uh, 
for the year before he started, we had Colonel Per Ray Meade. And he had to use a large magnifying glass to be able to read because uh, I was told, I mean, he never told me, but I was told that he was in the uh, Bataan Death March and was a prisoner of war. So I'm, did I get the two mixed up? I don't think so. I think they both were. Uh, so anyway. I at attended De La Salle Military Academy because I, I've mentioned this before, I had an older cousin who went into the Army, and I think, well, I never said that. I, I, I have a feeling that it was because of him coming back telling his stories that I decided I wanted to go in the Army and spend 20 years in the Army and retire at age 40 and have a, you know, uh, serve my country and have a pension. And as soon as I graduated from high school, I went down, uh, graduating from ROTC, not just at R55C school, but uh, when you finished your basic training, you were supposed to be, provided you didn't mess up, right away you were promoted one, gr you know, up one grade, uh, which a lot of other people probably... Same if also I found out later on if you were, which I wasn't, but if you were an Eagle Scout, the same thing, you would, when you finished uh, basic training, you would be picked up. I think that's pretty neat. Um, but anyway, as soon as high school was over, I went down to enlist, and I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. I did not know that they had a minimum weight requirement. Uh, what I never thought about was that since I was like in the second or third grade, I had very had very bad hearing loss in both ears, and that I just never thought of that, uh, and uh, it just never occurred to me that that and that would have definitely kept me out. And then uh, later on, two or three years later, I was contacted by the. Selective service and told to report for my selective service physical. I went down, and there was 200 of us, and they sent me a card saying that I was 1A. I went, God damn, I missed out on two or three years. And I, again, totally forgetting the hearing situation. I went down, to, and the recruiter said, ah, okay, well, Everybody that's 1A, I get a list, and so I'd have been contacting you, and I said, I'm ready. And uh, I said, I was ready two or three years ago, and uh, I came down, and you, you know, and he said, oh, wait a minute. And he, I, he actually blew dust off this book, you know, looked it up. And he's, <coughs> I think, though, he was just, the shop that he had, the location was probably getting street dust, and, you know, but anyway, he blew the dust off this thing, and he said, yeah, it, it shows that you're, with your height and weight, you are 40 pounds under the minimum requirement. So he called over to the Selective Service physical place, and they said, just a second. I'm not sure they had computers then. I'm sure, I guess they did. I don't know. Uh, I didn't have a computer. I didn't get a computer until 1978, I believe it was when Radio Shack came out with a Model 1. But uh, he called over and they said, oh, yeah, we see it now. Just We made a mistake. We'll send him a new card. So I got a 1Y card, which is, I found out a few years ago, well, just a few years ago because of Donald Trump, that that's the card that he got. He got deferments for education and then after he could no longer get a deferment for education, um, he got a, he said he had a burn, a burn, bone spurs in his foot. And uh, so that, then he got a one Y card. But I read then in the news, when the stories were reporting this before he was elected president or whatever, that uh, at, because I always kind of in the back of my mind, well, I'm not 4F. 
you know, four F, like one Y was uh, not acceptable unless a national emergency or something. Four F was we're not going to take you under any circumstances because of your physical condition or whatever. So I, I'd always kind of thought, well, I'm not four F. But then I was I'm reading about Donald Trump is that the Selective Service people at some point, quite a few years later on, uh, changed all the one Ys to four Fs. Uh, I was watching, I go in uh, streaks where I watch different, you know, YouTube um Different YouTube movie or YouTube things, and for, I watched like uh, I thought, what if I won a lottery? I would buy an island. I also checked like yachts, you know, and stuff like that, and go through and watch a whole bunch of videos. And I was thinking about uh, when Bush was elected to his second term. I was looking into watching videos from uh, Thailand, thinking about going to move to Thailand. Uh, but, um, okay, I got sidetracked. Oh, anyway. What, how did I get onto that? So what was I back before? And then I wind up, well, anyway, who, who, who cares? Um. No, no, there we are, back again. So, um, anyway, I have these two monitors set up, and I think I'm going to move this and put some something different over here. I do not think, I'm not sure. Well, it would hold it. I could put a 20-gallon tank. This is, now this, this desk, <coughs> I could put a tank on it. I could put a 100-gallon aquarium on this thing. Well, I'm not sure how it's long, but. Um, by the way, don't tell anybody. I believe, I don't know if, I just signed a new lease for here. I, um, I think the lease here says no aquariums. And I believe, I don't, I, you know, it's like, it's like these clauses when you sign up for something on uh, the internet or you purchase something and you click, you know, they have like 10 pages of uh, stuff they're not responsible for anything, all that kind of stuff, and this is the same thing. The the uh, lease is here, so I think it says you can't have an aquarium. But I think what they're worried about is somebody having a hundred, or maybe even a fifty-gallon aquarium, or having, you know, having it break and do water damage, or uh, having a hundred-gallon aquarium up there and have it come through the floor or something. Or I think, too, what they're worried about, uh, when people move out of this apart, this is a really nice apartment complex, and the people here are really nice that run it, and I recommend it, this place to you. Um, but when somebody moves out, they've had people move out who have just moved out, maybe who haven't paid the last month or two of rent or something and the two guys who work here in uh, the maintenance department or whatever and they have to come and move the people's stuff out people will just leave like we I had that happen people upstairs I forget how long I've been I came here a few years ago and I moved into an upstairs apartment next door but upstairs and then eventually, because this is a two-bedroom, two-bathroom, and then same, of course, up there, two-bedroom, two-bathroom. 
And when I moved in here for a year or so or more, I never heard a sound from upstairs. It was a, s a single female young. I never heard anything. These places are built really well, too, for uh, you don't hear sound uh, designed really well, too. No variety. I mean, they have single bedrooms, a couple of choices, and two bedrooms, you know, a couple of choices, but not a lot of... Uh, but so we had several people have moved in, some very for a very short period of time. And one of them that was a very short period of time, a, a man and uh, his wife, I guess his wife, and a, a small baby. And take them as an example, you know. Uh, they moved out. Apparently didn't pay. And also you're required, which is kind of hard, but it's one of the rules in the lease or whatever. You can't just say when your lease is up, uh, and you could say you're not going to sign a lease, but you have to give them, if you, when you're moving out, I think like two months' notice. Or it works out. I mean, it really, if something comes up and somebody wants to move, uh, you decide to move and then you, you contact them and they say, sorry, you needed to notify us last month, so you owe, you know, what something. So, but uh, people like this, this couple moved left. And so I was here and I heard crash, bang, boom, and what in the hell is going on, you know. And I went and opened up the, uh, you know, to go outside to see what's going on. And the maintenance guys upstairs just went into the, the people didn't take any of their stuff. And they just threw pieces of furniture, lamps, things were just being thrown down, smashing, you know, tables and stuff coming up, you know. And I, I get, got back in so I didn't get crushed, you know. And uh, now they put some stuff in the trash. They put a baby bed in there and a stroller or something was in the trash thing. And a couple of days later, I just... Uh, don't think I was outside. I think I heard it through the window, which is unusual. Although my hearing it, it, it but that couple with the baby who had lived upstairs showed up here, and I heard them walking by. Oh, I saw their stuff, you know, in the trash thing out there, and they walked by, and I forget what they said. They were looking for their baby bed or something, which apparently was all brand new. So. So I'm thinking that their rule about no aquariums, if that's still in there, and I don't remember seeing it, I don't think they'd care about a 5 or a 10-gallon or maybe even a 20-gallon aquarium. But I think they would object if they have that rule in there. I think they would object to, you know, multiple aquariums because if somebody just left, and then uh, had a 100-gallon aquarium. Uh, I know what it's like to set a 100-gallon aquarium up or to tear down a 100-gallon aquarium or to tear down multiple 10-gallon or 29-gallon tanks and that type of, you know. So that they wouldn't, like, the maintenance guys wouldn't be able just to walk in there and pick up a 29-gallon or even a 20-gallon tank. I think if I remember correct, a gallon of water is eight pounds per gallon. So you're talking about 10 gallons is 80 pounds. You're talking about, plus there's gravel. You know, you're talking about 200 pounds plus the glass aquarium with filled with water. You'd be very dangerous to, you know, it would probably explode or break. And so and they'd have to take out, the, you know, the water. So I think that, I think they're worried about one, somebody, especially upstairs, having a 50 or 100 gallon tank set up and have a leak in it or leave and leave it. And then the maintenance guys would have to deal with, you know, getting rid of it. So I don't, I don't know. So I still haven't, let me know what you think. But just keep in mind, should I get an aquarium and set it up? 
and if you have an uh, well I'm, if I I'm not going to ask you because you might say you don't get a 29 gallon aquarium and a 20 gallon or something and I can't afford them and also I don't want to do that because also I do not feel physically up to it would be hard for me to do a 20 gallon tank my arthritis is really bad I, I just kneeling down or bending over uh, to do the kind of stuff and uh, so I don't yeah don't give me your opinion on whether I should or shouldn't do it Not unless you want to so it'd be the money and be also the work of the thing and I'm going to be 78 I believe in March uh, not in the best health and you know let's be honest you know something could happen at any time and then my family would have to deal with you know my death and then they would also have to deal with, you know, getting rid of a 20-gallon and a 10-gallon aquarium or something like that. If I get an aquarium, I may just get a 10-gallon aquarium. Those of you, if you're interested in fish or whatever, you know, watch this guy's uh, videos. Um a small tank is much harder to take care of than, you know, like a five-gallon tank. You think, I'm just going to get a five-gallon tank. Yeah, if you, you know, get a five-gallon tank, put a couple snails in there and a couple catfish and a couple little guppies or, that, you know, and that, uh, you know, but it's harder to take care of than a bigger tank. A 10-gallon tank is easier to take care of. Watch this guy's videos, and he'll explain that type of stuff. But uh, a larger tank is actually easier, maybe not easier to set up because you have to put, you know, more gravel into it, more water into it, and whatever. But because of fluctuating temperatures and chemicals, if you make a mistake with a five-gallon tank and uh, have temperature problems or pH problems or uh, you have pollution building up or algae or whatever it is with a smaller tank it happens faster and the situation gets worse so anyway um, what else did I want to mention oh I have not been studying for my ham license now I stopped doing that after that ham fest I need to do that again um, I don't know if I want to mention, well, let me mention it. Let me, back a long time ago, there was a program called ACDC. You can see the way it's in. And it was a great program. And they had a, a deal where you paid for it and you uh, were entitled to it for life. And so I paid the $44 back in before 2002. One of the many programs that I did that to, by the way, I... Uh, so I paid the $44 for it. I was listening to Twithia, and I forgot, sort of forgot about it. I used it. I'd used it before that, too, and then I, I think it might have been you can use it, and then anyway, I paid for it, and it was for life. Didn't have to pay again. And then I stopped. Something happened. Uh, Windows 7, we went to Windows 10, whatever it was, and I forgot about it and uh, totally forgot about it. And I was listening to, watching Twit the other day. And Paul the, in uh, Windows Weekly mentioned, hey, 
there's this old program that is still around and it's ACDC and if you paid for it in the past you know you get it but now it's uh, a 40 or 50 dollar program uh, and they have this special you can get it for I think it's twenty dollars I believe it was and I thought wow I have my old, you know, registration and everything. So I downloaded it, and I didn't think that, you know, the code would work because I don't know what, how, but I figured it would, they've upgraded it, you know, a few times. So I entered my registration code, and uh, of course it didn't work. But you can use it for 30 days, free trial, I thought so. And I went to their site, and I, I left them, you know, my, name and my email address, my customer number, uh, the order number that I, where I paid $44 or, and uh, whatever, and I contacted them. And I, I th really thought that they would say, oh, okay, Mr. Howard, here's the, you know, they contact them and say, uh, we've moved along and uh, uh, ACDC photo editor program there that you, you know, it's it's not the same. Uh, that's, uh, I forget what they call it, legacy or obsolete or something. And so I really liked their program. I liked it back then. Uh, oh, man, I just hate, because they're not the only one that uh, back, I remember, oh, a whole bunch of them. Because I've always, I've never hesitated in signing up. I mean, a bunch of Android apps, I'll, you know, maybe it'd be a $5 or $10, you know, something for it. And I'll download it and I'll go ahead and pay the 5 or $10. I don't, things don't have to be free for me, you know, or whatever. But, and I just figure it's like, a, you know, a donation. The guy's trying to, guy or gal is trying to uh, you know put out software for us and uh, but there was a webcam XP program and I was one of the first people to use it and uh, they had a thing you know pay once you never have to pay again webcam XP great so I paid for it and a uh, very short period of time later, uh, I think less than a year, they uh, came out with uh, their new updated, you know, version of it. And uh, my thing wouldn't work, and I contacted them, and they said, oh, no, no. Uh, that was, you know, I forget, version 2, and this is version 3. And, you know, no, you have to pay every time a version comes out. That really pissed me off. And so I I like this program, but I just do not want to give them 20 more dollars, you know, give them any more money. Because this, this has happened a lot to me. Because um, I've been buying programs for a long time. I forget how many times I bought BBS programs. I bought uh, all types of uh, things. One guy who did a webcam program, I was his first customer to pay him. Uh, and he sold that program to a company, and that was the first webcam program. I couldn't believe it when I would go to, into a, a software store or whatever back whenever it was. And his program, I can't remember the name of it now, was in a box, you know, a webcam program, you know, a webcam uh, program for sale. You know, you could buy it. I'd already bought it, but you could buy it uh, in a box in a computer, you know, computer store. Let me tell you <laughs> a funny story about that, that uh, program. Anyway, I forget how I found found this guy, and I forget the name of the program. But anyway, uh, 
and that was before PayPal or XCOM or whatever. And uh, he, he had this good a good program. And I forget how much it cost. It wasn't a lot of money. I sent him a check through the mail. I don't know if you know what checks are. It's a promise to that somebody's going to pay you when you get this piece of paper from me. Uh, I sent him a check. And uh, so then... Uh, he sent me an email, and uh, I think his thing had a chat thing where you could get into it, I believe. can't remember exactly. Anyway, he came home from work. His wife had been saying, telling him, you know, oh, you're wasting your, whoops, let me do this. I had a couple of people tell me, you know, that if you're watching this on a, cell phone I never thought of that or even a tablet and I just have the video you know up in the corner or whatever that this is better when I'm not showing you the web pages or whatever um, anyway the, this uh, guy's wife had been telling him you know you're wasting your time doing that writing that program and doing this and nobody's going to pay you a penny you're not going to get a penny for that. Nobody cares about that. And so he came home, and there was a check, and he went in. Here, look, look. I got my first amount of money. Somebody, you know, Jim Howard, a guy, he sent me this money or whatever. And uh, so then he said, let me show you. And so he went, and I forget how the thing worked. Uh, I mean, I forget when using his program, if you, I f how did he know what my IP address was? Because this was before YouTube. YouTube didn't exist. Uh, this is before uh, any of these things. So, but anyway, so he comes to my video. Maybe I just had it, I don't know. So he comes, <laughs> he comes to the uh my, my site where I was, this is before, I wasn't going through a, a service. There wasn't any service to go through. I was streaming video from my site. And so he comes there. <coughs> he says, you know, show his wife. Okay. Now here, look, this is the guy who paid for this thing. And uh, he comes there, and I've got the camera going, and I'm not wearing. i got pants on right now. I don't usually have pants on. I wasn't wearing pants. I wasn't wearing a shirt. I wasn't wearing anything. Maybe I was wearing a hat. That's all I had on. And uh, so uh, he told me about that. He said, <laughs> there you were, you know, naked. And uh, then with him running his thing where he was live streaming, and it was when you live stream from your computer back in those days, you couldn't have a whole bunch. It wasn't like YouTube live streaming or See You, See Me or any of those other programs that came later uh, where they could handle a large number of people. When you were live streaming from your own computer, there was a limit on how many because of the bandwidth and uh, the power of your computer, stuff like that. But anyway, you know, Weeks later, I logged into his live streaming thing where he was, and then when I popped into the you know the chat window or whatever there at the side, uh, he said, "Oh, Jim Howard is here. Jim Howard is the first person who paid me for my program, you know, or uh, you know whatever." And uh, then he told the story, and he says, "I came home from work, you know." He's telling them the story. Because you know, I came home from work. There was a check in the mailbox. I went in and told my wife, "See, you told me nobody would pay me. Here, come and look. Come and look. Come and see." And then he logged in, and there I was, naked or whatever. So um, that I believe is the guy. Yeah, that is the guy who sold his program. Too, it was really neat because he was. I couldn't think of any improvements. He would, uh, Jim, what can I do to improve, you know, and he kept making improvements, stuff that I just never thought of, 
you know. Uh, and then one day, like I logged in, or else he at his web page or whatever, if there were web pages in, I think there would have been web pages in, I think. Uh, he said, Well, uh, I won't be online anymore. I sold the program and uh, we're taking the money and we're retiring. Or said he was going to, anyway, that was it. He was gone. Now, jumping to a totally different guy, he wrote a, this is later, he wrote a webcam program, and I can't remember the name of it, and I paid him for the program. I didn't have, you know, it would run, but I paid him, and uh, I forget what, you know, I got a little, and there, there again, the same thing. This guy was, hey, Jim, thanks for, you know, paying, because people were using his program, and I'm not sure how many people paid. Maybe probably not a lot. But he had some, I'm sure. And um, anyway, he, he would kick out to me, Jim, here, you know, here's the updated, you know, program I'm working on. Let me know what, you know, what you think. Maybe that was part of the thing by paying. You, you know, the other people had to wait and download, but he would kick out to me, hey, check this out. And so I was getting that sort of stuff. And then his program was really good, and it was getting better. And then he, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned to him or if he came up with the ID himself, but at that time, you couldn't run multiple cameras. Uh, you could run one camera. That was it. And... Uh, there was, though, before, and they, uh, a company made webcam, and if you, ha they had a special driver, which would, but anyway, so far as these webcam programs, that was it, and he said, uh, and I'm not sure if I recommend it or not, this, pro this program, I'm going to charge extra, a little bit of extra for this program, whatever it was, like $25 for the one that I was using. And he said, you know, 35 or 40 or something, and it'll be able to run more than one camera. And I said, fantastic. And he said, I'm working on it now. And I said, what's it going to cost? And I said, I'll send him, the, I send him the money. So he was sending me the things on that, and I was running multiple cameras. It was just... A, like his, the same program he was working on, except it would use multiple cameras. Um, and so then, he, anyway, he was kept asking me, "What can I do?" And I couldn't. I, I'm not. I just couldn't think of anything. And then, of course, he does things, and I thought, "Why didn't I think of that? That is great." Um, but then, so he said, uh, sent me an email. You know, okay, my. The main program is, I'm put, we're putting, putting the wraps on it. It is done. And you can download it like tomorrow morning. You can download it. And uh, that's done. And so I, the next morning or whatever, I downloaded it. Uh, the original program, you know, one camera thing or whatever. Of course, I still, and then anyway, he's, he said, okay, great, I saw you downloaded it. He said, this afternoon I will have, because I don't think there was much difference in them, you know, uh, the multi-camera one will work, and you can download the final finished product on that this afternoon. And I thought, yeah, okay, great, it's working fine, you know, the way I have it now, but great. So that afternoon I went, it wasn't available. I thought, well, he just ran into, you know, the next day I went, well, the next day, nothing had changed except no email messages to me. Nothing on his web page had changed. Everything was just the way it was that day. And I forget, you know, like a week later I go, nothing has changed. 
nothing, you know, on the web page, nothing has changed. Everything was, and then I started looking around, what, you know, I, then I left messages, hey, are you okay? What, ha you know, I'm thinking, did the guy have a heart attack? Did the police come and arrest him? What's the deal? And, of course, you had it where you could download the software, except not that multi one. That was also, you know, uh, tomorrow this will be ready to download, you know, and that was like a month ago. And I went back and I asked around on some uh, sites that I thought, does anybody know what happened to, because I didn't care about that final thing, program, wasn't that, I, I wondered what happened to the guy. And then like a year later, and I just, oh, I don't know what happened to the guy. A year later, whatever, I went, his web page was identical to it what to what it was everything was like to that morning when he said hey in the afternoon you know nothing had changed the link still worked and then I think I went like six months later or a year later and one or two of the links didn't work but everything was identical wish I could remember the name of of because maybe some of you could figure out uh I'm going to go to my grave probably. I'll be in the hospice care or whatever, and I'll be thinking, whatever happened. Of course, I can't remember his name. can't remember the name of the program. But I'll be thinking, whatever. I did a search. Like, I knew what city he was in or whatever, and I did a search of the obituaries. I went and tried to find, you know, was the guy arrested? Uh, did he have, did he die? I have no idea. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Uh, I need to go feed the cat. Uh, ec I can say echo because mine in here is the A word. So anyway, thank you very much for uh, watching.